Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com. Today is April the 4th, 2018. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Let me just say, today I see that golden boy, uh, Oscar De La Hoya, great fighter, great fighter, right? Oscar De La Hoya is out saying that Canelo epitomizes everything that you want in boxing. No, he doesn't. Let me just say unequivocally here, right? I'm very glad that Canelo has withdrawn from the Golovkin fight. Right? Quite frankly, in my opinion, he didn't have a choice because the Nevada State Athletic Commission wouldn't have bought this I didn't intend to use clambuterol defense from a millionaire fighter who has the resources right, to have monitored food in a fight of this magnitude. Let me go further and say the fight would have been distinctly uninspiring. Let's say Canelo came in and actually beat Golovkin, beat him up, knocked him down. I know I'd be sitting there watching my TV wondering, gee, is this Canelo beating him or is this clenbuterol beating him? Right? Understand the minute a fighter tests positive for a performance enhancing drug, it strips the fight that they have in a few weeks of any credibility. If Canelo won the fight, if he made the fight competitive, we would be wondering whether he had an artificial advantage. That's why what comes with the drug testing, random drug testing, is actually credibility. It actually enhances whatever the outcome is of the fight. Win, lose, or draw, you know it was clean. The minute you don't know whether it's clean or not, what's the point? Let me also say, too, if after Lucien Boutte tested positive for a banned substance and made the claim that a dietary supplement he used was tainted. If, after Dylan White tested positive for a banned substance, and he made the claim that a dietary supplement he had was tainted, if after all that, if I then decide to take the same dietary supplement under the same circumstances, Who do I have to blame when I fail a drug test right before a multi-million dollar fight? Folks, I have myself to blame, right? Any kind of excuse I would come up with under those circumstances would be flimsy. Well, understand, other fighters training in Mexico tested positive for clenbuterol. Canelo knew this going in, right? He knew that some of the meat in Mexico was tainted with clenbuterol. He, he knew it. So how much sympathy should I give the brother when he decides to eat the same meat Right. Doesn't he have the resources to ship in meat? Folks, I can go on Amazon right now and order meat and have it shipped in. Doesn't he have people around him, nutritionists, people responsible for his training, a manager who should handle these things? So I'm sorry, but the excuse being given here is absolutely flimsy and undercut the credibility, whatever credibility, this fight would have had. Right? So, I'm very happy that Canelo speared all of us. Right? He literally put Golovkin in a no-win situation. Let's shift gears. Let's talk welterweight division.
Right. And, and let me also just say, just in closing on Canelo, I understand these promoters are doing their jobs. Right. They're going to tell you that their fighters always the epitome of what a boxer should be. There's always going to be some cover story. Lucien Boutte didn't know his supplement was tainted. Dylan White didn't know his supplement was tainted. You know, Canelo, like these other fighters, right, like these other fighters in the past, didn't know he was eating tainted meat. And so he should be forgiven, right? I, I don't believe he should be forgiven. The fact that other guys in the past ate tainted meat, meat tainted with clambuterol, should have put Canelo on notice that eating the same kind of meat was foolish. Right now, I don't say this lightly. From now on, there's going to be a cloud over Canelo. Right? He's going to have to agree, just as a matter of course, to rigorous drug testing from here on out for his fights to have any credibility. Right? Any credibility. We would laugh at this excuse if Usain Bolt gets busted before an Olympics with clambuterol in his system and he says, you know what? Just like these other sprinters got busted for clambuterol, I ate the same kind of meat. Give me a free pass. We don't do that in the Olympics. We're certainly not going to do that for multi-million dollar title unification matches in boxing. Right? Guys need to get their head on straight. Quite frankly, Golden Boy would do a hell of a lot better if they said, look, clearly mistakes were made. Right? We're going to make sure they don't happen again. Rather than release cheesy videos saying, I have never taken steroids. Yeah, right, right. What Canelo needs to do is to just come clean and say, look, rest assured that my next training camp is going to have monitored food. We're not going to play games by getting food from the same sources that ended up having other guys fail tests. We understand the hard-earned money you're paying to watch us in championship-level fights. And financially, I'm in a different position than young guys who can't afford to monitor their food. Right? So just, just food for thought. Okay, let's talk about the welterweight division. I think things are about to change. You know that movie, No Country for Old Men? Well, let me just say, I mentioned with regard to the heavyweight division, a lot of old guys are going to be lingering on in their careers, right? Guys like David, hey, I'm sure saw the exit, were headed toward the exit, said, hey, I've had my run. Then suddenly they're seeing these guys in championship fights and they're saying, you got to be kidding. This guy can't land a legitimate right hand in this fight. You see Deontay Wilder and you're thinking to yourself, wow, standing eight at the beginning of a round? When's the last time I saw that? Right? You see all of these guys. And you're thinking to yourself, gee, maybe my old skills can carry the day. I mean, understand, old guys who have done it all in the past, they'll leave when there's no opportunity. Right? When there's a dominant, younger, fresher champ. Someone who's knocking out guys, right? Old guys will say, gee, you know, I was planning on retiring. Now looks like the right time, right? I, I, don't, I don't need to go in the ring against prime Lennox Lewis or prime Mike Tyson, right? Old guys want to be remembered fondly. They don't want to be embarrassed. Nobody wants to come across like Joe Lewis did against Rocky Marciano or like Ali did against Larry Holmes. If you remember those fights, you're cringing. 
right? The older guy got beaten up. In Lewis's case, knocked out of the ring. Who wants that? So old guys will actually start planning vacations when they see some dominant fighter emerge on the scene. Right? Guys look at Mike Tyson in his prime, and many will say, you know, my time is up. <laughs> I'm not going to get beaten up here like Trevor Burbank's getting beaten up. Uh, good riddance. I'm out of here. Right? But yet, Manny Pacquiao is sticking around at 147 pounds, isn't he? Right? This is Manny Pacquiao who's had years of a magnificent run. Understand. Even his fight against Floyd Mayweather was a few years ago. Now, what this should tell you is that Pacquiao still doesn't buy into Jeff Horn. Right? He fought Jeff Horn. He saw Jeff Horn in the ring. He's still not convinced that Jeff Horn can beat him. It should also tell you that Keith Thurman is coming off surgery. As with James DeGale. Thurman might take some time to recover. Even if he's in the ring, and I understand Thurman is about to get in the ring, it might take him some time, it might take him more than one fight to get back to being Keith Thurman. This should also tell you that, you know, Errol Spence isn't defensively blessed. He's a little bit flat-footed. He might be there to get hit by a guy as quick as Manny Pacquiao. It should also tell you that Danny Garcia is a mid-range hooker who's made to order for an episodic hard puncher like Manny Pacquiao. It should also tell you that as brilliant as Terrence Crawford is, and Crawford is a deconstructionist, right? He can break you down. But he might be a little bit too slow against Manny Pacquiao. So Manny Pacquiao, who has one foot in politics, right? who has a career he's already pursuing that's outside of boxing, Manny Pacquiao has signed to fight for the welterweight title against Lucas Matisse. To all the welterweights out there, I say, be afraid. Be very afraid. I think Manny Pacquiao destroys Matisse. Let me just say this. Matisse was inactive for some time. Then he had one of the weakest fights for a title in the welterweight division in several years. Right? The opponent he fought was overmatched with very little championship experience. They practically gave Matisse the belt, right, wrapped in a package with a bow on it. Now, Matisse hits hard, but he doesn't lean on you and use his body and mass to throw you around like Jeff Horn does. Not only that, he has a problem with speed. You might remember his fight against Devin Alexander. Alexander gets there first repeatedly. Right? Repeatedly. Now, Matisse has his moments in that fight. That fight was close. But Matisse didn't really have an answer on how to slow down a guy with speed who knew what he was doing. Manny Pacquiao, southpaw like Devin Alexander. Manny Pacquiao has a decided foot speed advantage in this fight. He has a decided hand speed advantage in this fight. He doesn't have to be around Matisse to badly hurt him. He doesn't have to engage Matisse to give Matisse a chance to deconstruct it. Pacquiao is going to set the pace. He's going to be bouncing around the ring because that's what Manny Pacquiao does. Right? A fighter like Matisse who's hoping to deconstruct you isn't going to have an opportunity to stay in the pocket 
Watch Manny Pacquiao's patterns. Right? Pacquiao is going to come in. He's too lightning fast. I think Manny Pacquiao wins the welterweight title. Then I believe we need to be prepared for some huge fights. Right? Let's remember Manny Pacquiao against Jeff Horn. Right? Officially, Manny Pacquiao loses that fight. But just to understand, for those of you who feel that Pacquiao is too long in the tooth, he's too old, just to understand that even in that Jeff Horn fight, there's a moment in that fight where the referee almost had enough. The referee goes over to Horn's corner and says, look, you better show me something. Now, Jeff Horn was able to come back in that fight. But understand, a lot of Jeff Horn's game involves throwing a sh lineman in the NFL, right? He's bullying you over to the ropes. He's doing things between punches. I'm not sure if these guys can do that, right? Simply put, that's not Danny Garcia's game, right? Errol Spence is very big, throws punches a little bit wide. Right? I think Manny Pacquiao knows against Errol Spence that he can't allow himself to get pushed over to the ropes. I think Pacquiao hits hard enough to slow down Errol Spence. I think Pacquiao is smart enough to realize that he needs to stay away from Sean Porter. Right? There are other names who could emerge at Welter. Longtime subscribers here know that I think future Hall of Famer Mikey Garcia has a future at Welter. Right? But just expect a lot of interesting action here. Right? Because Manny Pacquiao, let's say he beats Matisse. The winner of the Jeff Horn, Terrence Crawford fight will be a compelling opponent either way. Let's say it's Jeff Horn. Well, Manny has unfinished business with Jeff Horn, doesn't he? Let's say it's Terrence Crawford, right? Then you have a fight between two future Hall of Famers, arguably the past and the present. The problem is a guy like Crawford who switches between lefty and righty, who's benefiting off the angles. Would he have time to do that against a guy with the suddenness of Manny Pacquiao? Pacquiao is sudden. You remember the Shane Mosley fight? Mosley comes in, big hitter. You remember how Mosley dismantled Antonio Margarito? Big hitter, two-handed. Mosley hits the canvas early against Manny Pacquiao. Isn't the same. You remember Brandon Rios against Manny Pacquiao? Rios goes a distance. Rios, very hard to discourage, right? Rios is a guy who's there to fight you. He's not there to run from you, right? Rios looks discouraged in that fight, doesn't he? By Rios' own account, he was seeing three of Manny Pacquiao. Pacquiao just moved too fast, right? Now, I get the feeling that if Manny Pacquiao thought that one of these younger guys was absolutely dominant and had a style that would beat him, I think Pacquiao would either walk away from the sport or walk away from the welterweight division. Understand, we've been hearing that Manny Pacquiao can make 140. But yet Pacquiao is here at 147. Think about it. He must not be convinced that the water at 147 is too dangerous for him to take a swim. So to sum up, I like Manny Pacquiao over Lucas Matisse. Then I think we'll get into an interesting series of events at welterweight where Pacquiao conceivably could fight a guy and might even be the underdog. Pacquiao who, 
for years has been a betting favorite. Right, Pacquiao, in the post-Floyd Mayweather world, if Pacquiao were to sign a fight, Errol Spence, who had a problem with Cal Brook's speed early in their fight, right? I'm guessing unbeaten Errol Spence would be favored against Manny Pacquiao. I think that's a betting opportunity. Understand, Pacquiao is shorter, he's faster, he's hard to find in the ring. Right? I know Jeff Horn was able to get to Manny Pacquiao's body. Let's just say I haven't seen too many guys able to get to Pacquiao's body. Are you positive that a guy as big as Spence, who throws punches as wide as Spence does, would be able to find Manny Pacquiao's body? Anyway, I like Pacquiao over Lucas Matisse. That's how I see it. I think Matisse is made to order for him. Understand, I know Pacquiao's been relatively inactive. In my opinion, at the world-class level, so too. As Lucas Matisse. Right? I like Pacquiao here. The country continues to be run by old men, folks. I think Pacquiao's going to make a splash at 147. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section to this video. Thanks for stopping by.